Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, Commander fans. I'm DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and it's Commander 2018. We have four decks. We have all sorts of new commanders. There's so much stuff to talk about. Let's jump right into Thanos. Thanos is an awesome old school throwback. This is Urza's Apprentice. Blue and a red for a 1-3 legendary creature, human artificer with haste. Blue, red, tap, copy target, activated or triggered ability you control from an artifact source. You may choose new targets for the copy. And there's a little bit of reminder text that mana abilities can't be targeted. I don't want to target mana abilities. I want to target all sorts of crazy abilities. This is activated and triggered abilities. So I really want to jump in immediately, start examining everything that I can mess with. Every crazy effect that I can double up. I'm so excited. But... One thing that I also want to stress is that you could just build a solid artifact deck and Thanos can just do everything that you want to do twice. The next thing I want to talk about is some combat abilities that you can copy. Thanos doesn't look very aggressive because, you know, he's sitting in a laboratory with delicate instruments and also because he's a 1-3 for 2 mana. But he has the ability to really impact combat. And finally, we have combo abilities. We know that Thanos is going to combo like crazy, so let's talk about a few of them and find out if you even want any of them in your deck. But the first thing, I gotta jump right in and start talking about all of these amazing abilities, activated abilities, triggered abilities, because Thanos is kind of a version of Strionic Resonator and Rings of Bright Hearth on a commander. These are awesome, valuable cards. These artifacts are crazy and broken. Strionic Resonator copies triggered abilities, and Rings of Bright Hearth copies activated abilities. It's also really similar to Illusionist Bracers, which is an equipment that copies activated abilities of the creature that it's equipped to. I want to quickly break down the difference between triggered abilities and activated abilities because we're going to be talking about them a lot. Strionic Resonator, well, it copies triggered abilities. Triggered abilities are when, whenever, and at. So when you see those words on your card, you know you're dealing with a triggered ability. For example, when blank enters the battlefield, you get something cool. That's triggered ability. Or at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to draw a card. That's again, another triggered ability because it uses those key words, when, whenever, at. Rings of Bright Hearth deals with activated abilities. It's cost, colon, effect. Actually, one thing that's really interesting is that Strionic Resonator has an activated ability on it. Two and a tap, colon copy target triggered ability blah, blah 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 okay it's that colon the cost and effect that lets you recognize when it's an activated ability so let's get a few obvious interactions out of the way rings of bright hearth goes infinite with basalt monolith because basalt monolith is an activated ability three untapped basalt monolith rings of bright hearth can copy that for only two generic mana which means that basalt monolith which generates three mana, will net you one mana after you tap and untap these things over and over again. Let's look at Strionic Resonator, which goes infinite with Paradox Engine and a bunch of mana rocks. Because Paradox Engine is a trigger, whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. This means we can go infinite pretty easily with just a handful of mana rocks in these two cards. All we have to do is cast a spell. Paradox Engine says, hey, I'm a trigger. Whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. So with that trigger on the stack, we're going to tap all these great artifacts that we have. We're going to generate a bunch of mana, maybe even a little bit of value. But most importantly, we're going to tap this Strionic Resonator and we're going to copy the Paradox Engine trigger that says untap all non-land permanents you control. Then we're going to allow that copy to resolve, untapping all of the non-land permanents we control. Great. Now. We still have one more untap on the stack, that original thing that we copied. Well, we're going to keep that on the stack because we need something to copy again with our Strionic Resonator. So we tap it again, we tap all those rocks, we copy that same untap trigger on the stack, and, well, what have we done? We've created an infinite loop where we can do anything at instant speed, generate a ton of mana, and we just keep copying that original untap trigger. 
This same thing can be reproduced with Thanos, you just need to make sure you got that colored mana. And this is another reason why you all should kill Paradox Engines when you see it hit the battlefield. You know, Thanos can go crazy really easily. It actually reminds me of a card called Staff of Domination. Staff of Domination is just a place to sink infinite mana, and we've just gone through two infinite mana loops. And so Staff of Domination can gain us infinite life, draw us our whole deck, but more importantly, we might just have a little bit of mana and use Staff of Domination to untap our Taunos. It has that untap target creature ability. That's pretty cool, especially when Taunos can be copying some crazy activated and triggered abilities. I also want to mention Minamo School at Water's Edge. This is just value because it untaps your commander to get more value. One thing that makes all of the things that I've described so good is that you would run them in normal decks. Basalt Monolith is a pretty good mana rock. Paradox Engine is just value, reducing all of your spells by the number of mana rocks you have. Minamo School of Water's Edge is an untapped blue source. This stuff is great, and so we can experiment with just normal cards, normal mana ramp, normal card draw that we would fit in a normal deck, and simply have our commander double everything up and take everything out of control. There's one piece of mana ramp I want to mention before we go into more realistic mana ramp, and that's Candelabra of Taunos. It's literally Taunos, our commander's Candelabra. Sounds great, perfect include. It's so cheap, it's so powerful, it's so expensive. Yeah, flavor included, realistically, don't worry about it. Let's talk about two powerful mana rocks, Dreamstone Hedron and Unstable Obelisk. Yes, include your mana vaults and soul rings and mana crypts and all that great artifact ramp, but I want to talk about these big pieces of artifact because they're so interesting. Big mana ramp is great, but these have an ability that we can copy. For Dreamstone Hedron, it's three tap, sacrifice Dreamstone Hedron, draw three cards. Now just imagine we can change in this stupid artifact and copy it with Thanos and draw six cards for five mana. Now that seems very good. Same thing with Unstable Obelisk. It's very clunky on its own, but suddenly if you have to tap Sacrifice the Obelisk, copy that with Thanos, and you're destroying two permanents, that seems very powerful. So one thing that's great is that we would normally include some dorky mana ramp like this in your deck anyways, but having the added benefit of getting double the value out of them later is really strong. And that includes some other abilities. Burnished Heart is solid mana ramp, even if the rate isn't that great, but suddenly if you tap two more mana and suddenly you're getting four basic lands onto the battlefield, crazy. Solemn Simulacrum, again, solid little card, but when you double up getting two lands or drawing two cards, man, these triggers are just great for taking advantage of. And speaking of drawing cards, we could go big. Tower of Fortunes. We could, with this artifact, pay 10 mana to draw 8 cards. I don't think this is like a really solid choice, but one thing I think could be great is a card like Sensei's Divining Top. Look at the complete other end of the spectrum. Uh, Sensei's Divining Top has an activated ability. It says, draw a card, then put Sensei's Divining Top on top of its owner's library. So what you do is you tap Sensei's Divining Top, and you copy the effect of Thanos, and then suddenly you get to draw two cards and then put the top on top. That's so solid. That gets you really deep into your library. And Combustible Gear Hulk has a hilarious trigger. And I don't know if your opponents are gonna wanna take so much damage. I have to say, I've really enjoyed playing Combustible Gear Hulk. I've found that my opponents very rarely take the damage because I guess they're selfish and don't mind me drawing so many cards. I don't know. I think this is a really fun card. But, I mean, just drawing a few cards here and there is fine and all, but what if I want to get the exact right card? Planner Portal. We're getting bigger, guys. Planner Portal. Six mana, six activation, only a measly two more to copy this. To search your library for any card, same thing with the Ring of Three Wishes. You get to search for any card, easily doubling it up to get two cards. And Tamiyo's Journal, you can copy the trigger at 
the beginning of your upkeep and get two clues, that's fine. Or you can sacrifice three clues, copy that trigger, and search your library for two cards. I'm trying to explore the coolest activated abilities, but those ones might be a little bit over the top. What I'm really excited about is cards like Master Transmuter, Koldotha Forge Master, and Mirror Works. These cards are not so crazy. Master Transmuter, return an artifact you control to its owner's hand. You may put an artifact card from your hand on the battlefield. Now that is an activated ability. Imagine doubling this up, just returning an artifact back, some stupid thing, a solemn simulacrum, and then suddenly, boom, boom, you're doubling up your crazy big artifacts. Koldotha Forge Master, sacrifice three artifacts? Sure, fine, but then copy this ability and get two awesome huge artifacts onto the battlefield. That's combo, that's so combo potential. You can totally go off. Suddenly you don't need to have half of your combo put together. Koldotha Forge Master is just a crazy tooth and nail with your commander. Let's look at Mirror Works. Five mana, whenever another non-token artifact enters the battlefield in your control, you may tip a two. If you do put a token that's a copy of that artifact onto the battlefield. So Mirror Works copies up all your artifacts and then your commander copies those up too because it copies triggers. So you're just getting copies upon copies upon copies. The value is insane. We can go wide with crazy cards. Now, these are just great solid cards that I would normally run, but how are we going to take advantage of this game? I feel like there's two avenues we can go down. The first one that goes really after my Timmy Hart is entitled Robot Smash. What do I want to do? Well, I want to put some crazy big creatures onto the battlefield and smash people with them. Mur Battlesphere. You can copy the trigger creating eight total murs. You can also copy the trigger of its attacking, doubling up everything. Worm Coil Engine. Yeah, that's a trigger when Worm Coil Engine dies. You get two little worms, double that up, and suddenly you're putting 12 power on the board when your 6-6 dies. And Scuttling Doom Engine is just a 6-6 for 6, nothing bad, unless it dies and then you double up the trigger and 12 your opponent. 12 them! There's tons of other creatures too, we don't even have to get that big. Meteor Golem destroying a permanent. You know, this is the kind of creature that I want to have with Panharmonicon. Panharmonicon, my best friend, you're kind of like another version of Thanos' ability. With Meteor Golem, I'll destroy two permanents, and then I'll use Thanos, and I'll destroy another permanent, and I will have so much fun. Now I want to talk about one more card that works really well, but it helps demonstrate this activated ability and triggered ability scenario, and that's Hangerback Walker. Hangerback Walker is amazing. It enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Now, notice that as I read that, there's no when, whenever, or at. This is not a triggered ability, so you won't get double the plus one plus one counters with Panharmonicon. You will not get double the counters with Thanos. But Thanos can copy any triggered ability. Panharmonicon is limited, it's only entering the battlefield. So when, Hangerback Walker dies. I can double the number of Thopters Hangerback Walker creates because Thanos doubles that dies trigger. Now I'm not here to talk bad about Panharmonicon, it's great. You might even find enough enter the battlefield effects to include it in your deck, but I do want to use it as an explanation. Panharmonicon is so much fun and Thanos does like three times as much as this artifact. So if you enjoy Panharmonicon, you will love copying every activated and triggered ability with this commander. I also wanted to talk about artifact smashing because of equipment. Skull Clamp? Yeah, Skull Clamp says whenever equipped creature dies, draw two cards. I will copy that and draw three cards off those thopters I just made off of Hangerback Walker. Blade of Selves? Yeah. Equipped creature has Myriad. A Myriad is a triggered ability whenever it attacks. Yeah, so I'm going to copy that. I will double up my Myriad trigger, and I'm pretty sure the Blade of Selves is just going to be attached to, yeah, probably a Mirror Battle Sphere. Yeah, a Mirror Battle Sphere. That sounds good. Oh, and I have a Panharmonicon in play. Um, and I untapped my commander um, with uh, one of these cards, and I'm just going to copy it again. Yeah. 
Okay, there's there's so many, actually equipment is great because there's so many great triggers on it. Sword of Fire and Ice just represents all of the swords. It says whenever equipped creature deals combat damage. Yeah, that whenever, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna deal four damage and draw two cards just for hitting you in the face. And then quiet a spike. It's so much fun because again, you can copy this trigger. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, uh, that player loses half their life rounded up. Uh, let's just take your life in half and then half again. No, it's not killing the opponent. It's just, just almost killing, almost killing them. Our last piece of combat transitions us into the next section. It's Crackdown Construct. Look, I figure if we're going to be activating abilities, if we're going to be including all these crazy cards, we might as well include one more combo. This innocuous 2-2 can get infinitely large. The combo of the day was Wandering Fumeral, because you could just activate it for zero. And then Construct gets big as you keep flippity-flopping your Wanderer from a 4-1 to a 1-4, from a 4-1 to a 1-4. That is an activated ability technically, and the Construct gets huge. But the Construct also goes ultimate with Basalt Monolith, an inclusion in... By the way, both of these are easy inclusions in the deck. And also Lightning Greaves. Yes, that equip is an activated ability. So all you need is two creatures and just keep passing the Greaves back and forth. And then suddenly your Construct is infinitely large. Smack you in the face. And this sort of combo aggro combat thing transitions me into other ways of winning the game. I just want to get to win. So let's talk about flat out winning. Well, if I've cast enough things and gained enough life, and I've been a real good boy, I can lightning bolt someone to the face with my own ether. Ether Flux Reservoir. Pay 50 life, 50 damage. And guess what? I'm gonna copy that with my commander. I'm gonna do a hundred damage. <laughs> oh, that's so great. That's so great. Do you know what else is really great? Let's just say we're casting a lot of spells. You can always copy the triggered ability whenever you cast a spell, gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. I also have to suggest another card just because it's good and it does happen to combo. Grand Architect. One blue blue for a Vidalcan Artificer, a 1-3. Other blue creatures you control get plus one plus one. A solid Anthem, okay. You can even make an artifact creature blue, buffing it. That's solid. And tap an untapped blue creature you control to add two colorless mana to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate the abilities of artifacts. That also seems good. It's an anthem, a pump effect, and a mana dork all on one card. It's just good. It's just so good. I know people shy away from Grand Architect because it combos so easily with Pillipala, gaining infinite life, but it's just a solid card. Include them both. Maybe you'll get infinite mana and win that way, or maybe you'll just ramp out something awesome. There's another combo that's really classic. It's Isochron Scepter. You can put all sorts of cards in there. One of the better ones is Dramatic Reversal because all you need is a little bit of extra mana, and then suddenly you're going infinite. Yeah, that's a pretty easy mode infinite there. But I guarantee you've seen an Aether Flux Reservoir before. Pilly Polygran Architect, sure, infinite mana. Dramatic Scepter, it's overdone. How about Planner Bridge? Just a casual six mana legendary artifact, eight tap, search your library for a permanent card, and put it onto the battlefield. I'd like to copy that. Now with Planner Bridge, we can also get the wonderful Paradox Engine, which lets you untap the Planner Bridge and all this other great stuff. I think it'd be really fun to just generate enough mana to pull every permanent out of our library. That sounds pretty great. Oracle's Vault is also a sinister ability. I'd love to copy this, specifically after it has some brick counters on it. Tap, exile the top card of your library until end of turn you may play that card without paying its mana cost. These guys might not actually win the game, but they're really fun. Uh, there's a few more cards that might actually end up winning the game. Let's talk about Sands of Delirium and Keening Stone. Sands of Delirium lets you mill out your opponents if you have infinite mana. There are some ways to get infinite mana. But I like more is not having infinite mana, but just having a lot of mana and doubling up the mill. Speaking of which, Keening Stone. Six mana artifact. For five and tap, target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards in that player's graveyard. 
it does not take very many activations of Keening Stone to mill someone out. And with your commander doubling it up, they're going to be drawing to an empty library very soon, and that is such a satisfying win. One last mana sink, one thing to double up, has to be an old favorite, Memnarch. Look at that activated ability, gain control of target artifact, yes, please. I will turn all of your stuff into artifacts, and I will get it for myself. The ultimate in greed. I love it so much. And honestly, I've been loving this commander. It does feel like the two avenues I described for you are a bit eclectic. One of them is more create a bunch of mana and kill someone. The other one is let's gain lots of value off of combat and those kinds of triggers. But honestly, I think that you can build just a solid deck with a lot of value as you have artifacts enter the battlefield, tapping for great abilities, having awesome triggers, and just having your commander give you advantage at every single turn. And that's one thing I like, is when you can explore different ways of building this. Go combo heavy and add disruption. Go with a less popular, probably less reliable, awesome creature strategy and double up those myriad triggers. Double up those sword triggers. That sounds like so much fun as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. There's going to be so many more videos coming out because it's Commander 2018. I have to thank TCGplayer.com because they sponsor Jumbo Commander and they make it possible for me to produce so many videos right now. So thank you TCGplayer.com. If you click the link in the description, it'll take you to a place where you can buy all of the Commander 2018 decks and singles. I want to also thank my patrons. Thank you patrons. If you're interested in being my patron, it's patreon.com slash jumbo commander. Guys, I got, I got so many videos going on. I can't even tease what's coming up next. Just, I guess, look at the links showing up right now to my other videos because there's a lot. There's, there's so much stuff going on. I'll see y'all really soon. Bye.